Good evening, it's a couple of minutes to six and we're live in the den of doom. Hopefully you've all had your bike and your run session today, so you're ready to do some stretching and relaxing. It's just about six o'clock, so I'll give you a couple of minutes to get yourselves together. We don't need any equipment today, and so hopefully we are ready to rock and roll. Sunday is traditionally the long bike or long run day. It's the day when you've been out for most of the morning, you come in, you eat your dinner, and you just hopefully get a chance to slob out for the rest of the day, if you don't have a dozen children leaping around all over you. However, <clears throat> if you've just come home and you've eaten, you've refueled, you've had your shower, and you're ready, let's try and fit this 30 minute stretch fest in, and we'll see how we fare. So usually when you've done your long bike or run, you come off, you're a little bit stiff. You get home, the hips have seized a bit, and you're ready to loosen everything off. So initially, you might find that these are a little bit tight. So rather than stretching straight away, what we're going to do is the mobilizing exercises. And as you can see here, I'm opening and closing the gate. So what I want you to do is lift your leg up, take it out, place it down, up, back in and down. You might find a little bit of clunking in the hip when you do this. Don't worry about it, that's absolutely normal. Mine clunking away beautifully. Okay, we're a little bit stiff. So we're just gonna speed that up a bit. Five, six, seven, and eight. And now we're gonna do the other side. So slowly, first of all, bring it out and in. Try not to rotate the hip too much as you take that leg out and back. So getting the leg mobilising within that hip joint. I mean, ideally, these mobilising exercises you should really do before you go out as well. Okay, we're going to speed it up. Ooh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Brilliant. Okay, now just bring your leg up, hug it in, and take it back. Right behind you, bring it up, hug it in, take it back. Hug it up, bring it in, take it back. Hug up, and back. Oh, and one more, that'll be four, and back. Don't worry if you wobble. <clears throat> On the other side now, hug up and take it back. Up, nice fluid movement, and back. And number three, and one more, number four. Nice stretch when you hug it in. What we're trying to do is just loosen off these hips a little bit more. So we're going to do some hip circles now, just to get this lumbar spine nice and loose. I'm going to try and keep it to a 30 minute session tonight so that you can relax for the rest of the evening. Smug in the knowledge that not only have you done your nice long workout, but also, and keep changing direction. So there's three in one direction and three in the other. Smug in the knowledge that you've done all your work. That's it, keep it going, fantastic. Okay, we're just going to take it over to the side, start that stretching process, push that hip out, and over to the other side. Push that hip out, your feet are a little bit more than hip distance apart, nice solid base. Bend your knees slightly, take it over to the side, and bend. Bend your knees, reach forwards, so you're more of a tabletop position now, and keep changing. So we're just going to keep some movement in this. So the muscles are getting some blood flow, warming up so that they are ready to stretch. Like I said, if you've done a long run or a long bike, you probably find that you've stiffened up, particularly in these hips, hamstrings, quads area, possibly also the calf. So actually today we're going to work, starting with the hips, I'm going to change the vantage point, so I'm going down. Okay, so I want you kneeling up to begin with. Hopefully you can still see me. Now what I want you to do is in a kneeling position, 
just drop your hips down to one side and then go back up again. So literally down to one side till your, your buttock goes on the floor and then up and then over to the other side. So each time we're getting a nice stretch here and you can see that the shape of my torso or my upper body is curving. So we're going to go up and then down to the centre and over to the other side again. That's it. We're now warming up these muscles, getting ready for some deeper stretches. And up and that side. Fantastic. Well done. Thank you for going. Once that starts to loosen off, we'll do another three of these on each side. Another two, that's brilliant. And last one. And down on the other side, that's it, fantastic. What I want you to do from here is we're going to cross the legs, holding them there. We're just gonna do some circles. Taking it right round, nice big circles warming up those muscles, giving them a little bit more of a stretch each time they come around. Keep it nice and smooth. Place your hands wherever is most comfortable for you. Brilliant. One breath all the way around. Two more on this side. manage, taking it down, feeling a stretch as you go forwards. Remember, it should just be a point of tension, definitely not pain. If anything is painful, stop what you're doing, ease it back a little bit. And three more. Two more. Last one. Brilliant. So from here now, what I want you to do, I'm just going to get you to lean forwards, as far forward as you possibly can. If you can get your elbows on the floor, that's absolutely amazing. If, like me, you can't, then just lose your weight, take your fingers forward and feel that stretch. Try and keep your bottom on the floor, don't feel it coming off completely so your seat bones are on the floor throughout and keep breathing. Each time you breathe out, you're just going to take it a little bit lower, stretching that lower back. Make sure your feet aren't too far tucked under so that you can get yourself down there. Anywhere you can feel tension, focus on relaxing as you breathe out. down. In an ideal scenario now you're in a nice warm room so that you hold on to the heat and your muscles can stretch. Okay, back up to centre. And what you should do now is we're just going to go to the right leg. I've got my left leg in front at the moment. So you're going to go to the right leg and you're going to lean forwards. So your hands are either side of that knee. Take it forwards, feel the stretch down your left hand side. Okay, all the way down here. To deepen the stretch, you place your hand on the left knee. And the stretch will go deeper into the hip. Pushing it down now, as you lower, keep your back as flat as you can. Lower down toward that right knee. And bring it back up. Now take the left leg out. We're going to stretch that left leg. <clears throat> now if you're super flexible, I want you to put this elbow down and wrap your hand underneath the calf. If you're not as flexible, I want you to reach for your 
the inside of your foot. I want you to place your left hand on your back and tilt your chest up towards the sky as you lean towards that right foot. And take some breath. So you're leaning down to the side, you should feel the stretch coming all the way down this left hand side, possibly into the glute. Depends where you're holding your tension. Now take your arm up, take that stretch, feel it go deeper into the side of your body. Focus on relaxing every time you breathe out. You breathe in, you lift up, and you breathe out. Let it go a little bit further. Two more breaths here. Last one, remember not to fall forwards. When you breathe in, take it back. And all the way over. Bring your arm back first, place your hand on that lower back, and then lift it up. Now your right leg is outside of your left. <clears throat> We're going to go forwards. Again, don't tuck the foot underneath the leg, keep it in front of the leg. Go as far forward as you possibly can. It doesn't matter if you're still upright, as long as you're feeling a stretch in that lower back and possibly in the hip. Again, each time you breathe out, let your weight take you a little bit further. Focus on relaxing. Head down. Two more breaths. And last breath. Walk it back up. Lean over to the left leg, hands one hand on either side of the knee, and go down as low as you comfortably can. Now place your hand, take it deeper on the right knee, so right hand on the right knee, pushing that knee down, it should take the stretch deeper into the hip. breaths here. Each time you breathe out, focus on relaxing. And final breath. Now taking your left leg out, as I said, super flexible, elbow down on the floor, tuck it underneath your calf. For the mere mortals amongst us, <laughs> reach forwards, grab hold of the inside of your foot, place your hand on your back, lift your chest up towards the ceiling, feel the stretch in that thigh, so by pushing your thigh deep into the floor, feel that stretch in this lower back here. Focus on breathing. Two more breaths. Take the arm up and over. Keep that chest up. So every in-breath you do, think about lifting the chest. And every out, just take it that little bit further. Just a little bit further. Keep it there. Fabulous. Well done. These sessions, although they're yoga moves, are just to stretch and relax your body after a long, hard day, either running or in the saddle, riding your bicycles, in fact, doing any sport at all. Two more breaths. Fabulous. 
fabulous, well done. Okay, from here, we're going to just go back and we're going to do the stretch where we, oh sorry, and just take it over. And what I want you to do, I'm taking it over to the right hand side, you want to make sure that you push down and look towards your left. Your left arm is out to the side. Try and keep that left shoulder down and that hip right the way over. Keeping your knees together, feel that stretch and that across the lower back. And one more breath. Back to the centre. You can use your arm to help assist with that. It's not a strength exercise today. It's all about stretching. Take your knees in your left hand. Take it over to the side, keeping your right side shoulder down. Feel that stretch in the lower back and possibly the glute. So once again, what we're going to do is we're going to cross one leg over. So now my left leg is over my right and we're going to drop down to the right hand side. So my left leg and hip should be getting a deeper stretch. Looking to the left, keep that knee up nice and high to maintain the stretch. And two more breaths. Nice deep breaths. Really think about relaxing. Let those sense senses just let go. Last breath. And then we take them back up to the center. Swap legs, keep it nice and high, remember. Take your left hand, place it on your right leg and take it down. Keeping it high, keep that stretch. Use the weight of your other leg as well as your hand to deepen that stretch. You may feel a pinching inside the groin area. Don't worry about it again, try and release it. What's happening there is the muscles are not releasing. And they're holding on to the tension. Two more breaths, nice big breaths. Every time we breathe out, our parasympathetic system kicks in and tells our muscles to relax, not to be afraid, to get rid of the fright or flight system and just relax. And last big breath. Feel the stretch going deep into my glutes and out we breathe. back into the middle. Okay, and now we're going to move on to the piriformis stretch. So place your foot, my left foot is going on to my right leg, my hands are going through the knees and I'm push, pulling in as well as pushing away with that knee. So my left hand is push or arm is pushing against my left knee as I'm pulling my right leg closer towards me to get a nice deep stretch there. Two breaths. Relax the neck, don't let it peak up. Keep your chin down and last breath. And gently lower that leg. Change legs. Stay nice and relaxed, keep your chin down. My ponytail's getting in the way, unfortunately. Put your hands through. So now my right elbow is pushing against my right thigh. And I'm bringing my left leg in as close as I can. I've got a lovely deep stretch going right through the glute there. Into the piriformis. Also stretching the IT band. 
two step, two breaths left. Nice big breaths. Last breath. Well done. Okay, now lower those down and gently come back up into the sitting position. So from here we're going to look at now stretching our quadriceps. The way we're going to do that is we're going to form a triangle oops, at the front of our body here. So I put my right leg behind, my left leg is in front. The key here is to go tilt the pelvis till you feel a stretch in that quadricep and just take it back as far as you can. Now some of you who are more flexible will probably find that you're able to lie flat on your backs here. I can get down to my elbows on a good day. If you're not feeling a stretch or you just want to stay sitting up because it puts too much pressure on your lower back, what I want you to really think about to increase this stretch is to tense, I've got my right leg back, I want you to tense that right glute. Tilt that pelvis and tense your right glute as you push your pelvis forwards and deepen the stretch in the quadricep. Well, that thigh muscles. Again, keep it there. Stay nice and relaxed. If you can go further, obviously, go further. The knee must stay on the floor. Don't let it come up, otherwise it defeats the object. Keep that right glute switched on to increase the stretch. just walk it up nicely. Okay, lovely. And then swapping the legs over. What I want you to do, make sure that your toes are pointing backwards, pelvis has got the correct tilt, lean back and really think about engaging that left glute now. That left glute is what's going to give you that stretch. Keep your knee firmly placed on the mat. Don't let it rise up. And then if you feel confident that it's not putting too much pressure on your lower back, come back. If you can feel your knee starting to lift, then just take yourself back up again. It's not about being the most flexible person. It's about returning your muscles to their normal length, possibly having a little bit of an increased length to them. But you can also be too flexible and reduce the elasticity of your tendons. We need those tendons to be tense, to be able to transfer the power when we're running. So don't worry if you're not super flexible. Two more breaths. walk it back up. Fantastic, well done. The stretch that we're going to do from here now is really focusing now on our hamstrings. We're just going to do the sitting stretch. <coughs> First of all, we're going to do it with both feet, attempting to keep our back nice and flat. I'm very envious of those people that can get their chests down here and faces on their knees. I'm not one of those people. So basically, you want to take that stretch as far as you possibly can. If you need to use a band or something to assist you with that, that's absolutely fine. But don't, yeah, that's not going to help particularly. If you've got those legs and you're only reaching here, that's fine. I just grab a band <coughs> or a piece of clothing, doesn't matter what you've got handy, if you can't reach your toes. Because what we want to try and do is keep our back flat throughout these. <coughs> So you place it here, keep that back nice and flat, and just go down as far as is comfortable for you. Some of you have probably just put your arms wrapped around those legs there. Okay, as comfortable as you can with a nice flat back. As you can see, my back is quite flat now, but if I did do that, 
it's totally rounded. So I'd rather my flat back and I'm focusing then on the hamstrings. Once you round your back, you're changing the emphasis of the stretch and putting pressure on the lower back. And we've already worked out here. Again, keep that there, keep breathing. And relax. Now from here, I'm going to tuck this one in. I'm going to turn my body towards my foot here. And then I'm just going to take it again as far as I can with as flat a back as I possibly can. So again, you're going to get a nice stretch in the gastric venous here if you're using a band because you're going to be pulling against that foot, getting a lovely deep stretch right down that hamstring and gastric venous. What you'll find is you've got one side of your body that will be more flexible than the other. And again, think about letting go of that every out breath. Now in order to develop and increase our flexibility, we need to be holding these for a minimum of 30 seconds. I haven't got my stopwatch on, I'm not uh, looking at it like that, but I'm just holding it as far as it's comfortable, feeling the release. There's no shaking, there's no tension. If you pull it, or try to stretch too hard and take it too far, what will happen is your muscles will actually reject that stretch. They'll work against you. Okay, changing legs over to the other side, keeping the back nice and flat. Pull your toes towards you, get a stretch going down the hamstring and right into that gastrocnemius, which is the calf muscle behind your legs and the lower part of your legs. So the hamstring is the upper muscle in the back of your leg and the gastric venous is the calf muscle, one of the calf muscles in the lower leg. We'll talk about the others just as we come to finish shortly. Keep breathing, keep letting those muscles relax. Nice flat back. that one. What I mentioned regarding these calf muscles is we have got two, well there are more than two calf muscles in there, but the two that we're mostly concerned with stretching are the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The gastrocnemius is attached above, it's attached to our femur, to our upper half of our leg, whereas the soleus is attached to the lower half. Now we can only stretch the soleus with a bent leg. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do the downward facing dog initially gives us a nice overall stretch. Again, we need to ideally have that nice flat back. It all depends on your flexibility. Okay, in order to now engage the soleus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend both legs, as you can see there, and I'm just going to put my weight, I tend to rest my foot on the other leg, but it doesn't really matter what you do with this free leg. But just put, bend the leg and keep pushing that heel into the ground. That's it. Keep it going. Nice stretch. This is one of the ones, soleus muscle is one that gets neglected because a lot of people stretch their calves with a straight leg. And change legs. Again, the, other, the spare leg can do whatever you want with it. Keep the other leg slightly bent so we've got rid of the gastrocnemius. If you want to rest it there, that's absolutely fine. Again, you can do this against a wall, you don't have to be in this position if your shoulders are particularly weak and starting to make ache. Back into downward facing dog. Hold it in. There's one muscle that I'd like to just talk about with you and also our feet. So the muscle I'm going to talk about now is the tibialis anterior. Tibialis anterior is the muscle that dorsiflexes the foot, lifting the foot up 
every time you take a step. Hill work, lots of mountain walking, post path walking with your boots on will cause that to ache. So that too can be stretched, but we can stretch that quite easily either just sitting on our feet like this, or if you have got very flexible ankles, okay, you can use a foam roller and again just, just put your feet on there and just sit back on it. And that will, will stretch the tibialis anterior if you're finding that they are particularly stiff or sore. And our feet, so with our feet, what I want you to do is just pull your toes up toward you, your big toe in particular. We need that elasticity, we need that mobility in the toe in order for us to spring off when running. We also need to be able to land on a solid surface and then power off it. So all of our power is coming through that big toe joint and that's the weight of your entire body. So we must, must, must take care of them. A lot of people forget, so what I want you to do is just pull your foot toward you, push your foot away, pull your toes again towards you. And then circles with your big toe. You might feel it wants to click, don't worry if it does. Ten in one direction, I'm doing ten in the other. There you go, have a nice click out of there. Okay, fantastic, and one more stretch. So that stretch is stretching right through the plantar fascia. A lot of people suffer from plantar fasciitis. A lot of that is because there's too much tension in that big toe joint. Okay, look. If you want to do the other toes, there's no harm in doing those either. You move on to the other foot. Pull it toward you. Push it away. So get some mobility. Pull your foot toward you. Have a nice click then as well. Push it away. Let's do our 10 circles. Nine, 10 in one direction and 10 in the other. One click again. Nine, 10. Pull it again toward you. Never neglect your feet. Okay. And give them all a bit, a bit of spacing. Okay, so just jiggle the foot, get the muscles in the feet to relax. Massage your feet, make sure you're looking after them. And hopefully now you're feeling refreshed and ready for whatever tomorrow may bring. Thank you so much for joining me for this quick uh, stretching session. If you haven't already, please, please subscribe. You'll get access to the playlists. I've got turbos, stretch and relax, sw dry land swim sessions, also some information ses sessions which are relevant for both A-level PE students or anybody who's interested in sport and physical activity in general. Okay, so thank you very much once again. Hope to see you soon. Bye.